Welcome to the woodshop at K-State's art department. Before using any tool, be sure to do the following. Go to the woodshop canvas page, download the liability waiver, read, sign, and submit it to the portal. Complete the woodshop general safety module by reading the emergency and general safety policies, review the woodshop standard operating procedures, watch the associated video, and take the general shop safety quiz. Once these are completed, review each module for the tools you wish to use. Watch the videos, review the manual, and take the quiz. You must wear eye protection when using any tools in the woodshop. You must wear ear protection when using any power tools in the woodshop. You must wear a dust mask when creating any dust. These are found next to the main entrance. A power drill, at its most basic description, is a motor that can be attached to either a drill bit to cut holes or a driver bit to interface with a screw. The motor is housed in a body that it is designed to hold the motor perpendicularly to a workpiece. There must be a power source that is either corded or battery operated. A chuck is added to the front of the motor in order to hold the bits in place. The standard operating procedures for a power drill are as follows. If the battery is low, do not continue using it. Charge it and replace with a charged battery. De-energize the tool by removing the battery and inspecting it for damage before use. Make sure to have the workpiece secured properly to a stable work surface with a clamp or vise. The chuck is an adjustable collet system that can open and close onto different diameters of bits into its opening. The chucks on most drill drivers are keyless, meaning they can be loosened and tightened by hand without the use of a tool. With the drill de-energized, you can grasp the front of the black chuck with your dominant hand and grasp the back of the black chuck in your non-dominant hand. Turning the front clockwise and the back held still will tighten the chuck. Counterclockwise will loosen it. Make sure your bit is centered and tightened before use. Your drill has a direction of rotation selector located above the switch trigger for changing the direction of bit rotation. If right-handed, use your index finger to push this selector to go forward. Use your thumb to push the selector to go in reverse. Setting the direction of rotation selector in the off or center lock position helps reduce the possibility of accidental starting when not in use. The two-speed gear train is designed for drilling or driving at low one speed or high two speed. A slide switch is located on top of your drill for selecting either low or high. Low will have more power and control over the slower speeds and is usually good for driving screws. While high delivers more speed and is usually good for drilling. Your drill has a 24 position clutch. A torque adjustment ring can be turned to select the right amount of torque for your application. A high number will allow the drill to deliver more power into its turn. A low number will make the drill ratchet in place when a certain torque load is achieved by the motor. The variable speed switch trigger is found under your index finger when gripping the tool by the main handle. 
This delivers high speed with increased trigger pressure and lower speed with decreased trigger pressure. The impact driver is a similar tool to the drill driver, yet has a ratcheting impact feature whenever the trigger is pressed to aid it in driving hardware into a material. You will hear this ratcheting feature when in use and feel the pulsating sensation from the impact every time it ratchets. This tool is primarily for driving screws with an appropriate bit attached. Its impact ratcheting features does not allow for easy drilling of holes. Be sure to wear hearing protection to guard your ears from the noise of this ratcheting feature. Impact drivers have a hexagonal collet instead of a chuck at the front of the tool. This collet only allows for quarter inch hexagonal shanked bits to be installed into it. In order to do this, you should pull the outer sleeve of the collet forward, slide the appropriate bit into the collet and then release the sleeve. The bit should lock on into the collet. If it does not, the bit may not be designed to be used in an impact driver. Be sure to get an in-person training to have hands-on experience with the tool before you use it.